Good morning. In today's video, I'll talk of long range fires. This is my third video uh, in the series of eight videos that I'll be doing, which are the eight lessons uh, culled from the Ukraine war. Now, when we look at the war, we find that as far as the Russian military is concerned, their long range fires seem to be delivering now, despite the fact that the Russian military would be holding back a lot of its capabilities and capacities for an escalation just in case NATO also enters the war for that. So their long range fires comprise of their land based missiles, especially the hypersonic missiles and the integrated air and mis missile defense systems. Now at the heart of these systems is what is called the reconnaissance strike complex. Reconnaissance strike complexes are the software networks which connect the sensors with the shooters to ensure an automated flow of information. And these are at the heart of the kill chain. Kill chain, as many would be aware, is a three step process in which you first assess the situation in step two, the targets and what punishment or what effect is required on the targets is to be decided. And in step three, appropriate shooters are then allocated for the targets. This is the three part process. Now we can make out that these software systems are very important. As I said, what the Russians call the reconnaissance strike complexes. The Americans call the same thing battle networks. And the PLA calls them operational systems. The Indians don't have to call them anything because the Indian military is not networked. Forget about all the three services being networked, even the individual services are not fully networked. Now, having said that, let's look at this good lesson of long range fires, how it affects our battle space where we have the Indian military and its primary threat, which is the PLA. Now, the first thing is that for the Indian military, the long range fires will be delivered by the Indian Air Force, which will also be its first line of attack. Not the case with the PLA. In the PLA, despite the fact that PLA Air Force or PLAF, if you look at the open sources, they have something like 1,800 fighters of which the majority are fourth generation and they have a few fifth generation aircraft also. But this will not be the PLA's first line of attack. Their first line of attack will comprise of different non-kinetic and kinetic fires. In their non-kinetic fires will be the cyber fire, electronic fire and laser fires. Something that I will discuss in my next video, which is on adversarial attacks. In this video, I'll concentrate on their kinetic fires, which are delivered by their land based missiles. As we may be aware, the PLA has perhaps the largest inventory of land based missiles, and they do something like 135 ballistic missiles test for training as well as for testing each year in 2021 they did this this was, this is the pentagon report to the us congress and it is it was underlined there that so many number of tests is more than the test and the training done by the entire world combined in this domain so this is the importance they gave and after the 2015 military reforms PLA brought all their conventional and their military uh, and their nuclear capable land based missile under one organization called the rocket force. Now the PLA rocket force is a very important organization. If you look at the simple thing that it does not report to the theater commands. It reports directly to the tri service highest command headquarters operational headquarters, which is the joint staff department working directly under the CMC, the Central Military Commission, which is the highest policy making body of the PLA in China. So this is where they operate. Because the PLA has always given importance to 
land based missile it was sometimes in the 90s they realized that it was not possible for the pla to take on the us air force one on one because the us had deeper pockets and the us air force the technology levels were much higher so the pla came up with a asymmetrical solution okay then let's now focus on the ballistic missiles on the land based missile ballistic and the cruise missiles which gave them many advantages for example they are much cheaper they don't require a runway they don't require a air superiority to operate they can produce operational surprises so there are many benefits of that so that is why this remains as far as the pla is concerned the rocket force will be the first line of attack now before we go any further in trying to understand where it fits in on our chess board it is perhaps important to once again recall in a little more detail both the war concepts of the indian military as well as the pla now as far as the indian military is concerned as i spoke in my last video also they still follow the 1986 air land battle concept of the americans where the entire focus is on the front line the focus is on fighting the first war best it is a show of force at the beginning that is important in this 1986 air land battle and as far as the operational uh, you know the tactical level of war then the operational level of war is concerned it is similar it is basically a a bigger tactical unit where you have more assets than what you have at the tactical level so the quantity is more the not much difference in the quality and there is no operational art involved here because everything is to happen at the first at the front line itself this is the 1986 thinking and this is perhaps the reason that when recently uh, the chief of the army staff general manoj pandey was asked and this is the question all the journalists and the knowledgeable anal analyst also ask is that chief what is the situation on the line of actual control which is the front line between the indian and the chinese forces so his response was uh, manoj pandey's response was that now we have robust deployments on the line of actual control we have adequate reserved our preparedness is very high and because in his thinking he still feels that the pla will fight a similar battle and he believes that in that similar battle the indian soldier is battle hardened so he says that we need to prepare for a longer duration war because there will be lot of attrition and he also seems to think that there is a need to prepare for a full spectrum war just in case the two sides have matched conventional capabilities the problem here is that the indian military leadership is 30 years behind the pla three decades in technology and war concept this shows absolute intellectual laziness on the part of the indian military because let's see what the pla has accomplished and how the pla went forward so they accomplished things in two steps the first step was of course in 1986 itself around that time in the 80s when the us when the indian military was focused on the air land battle of the americans they were looking at the soviet concept of deep battles the deep battle concept where it was as far as the front line was concerned the soviets never gave much importance it was a side issue simple maneuvers were to be done there the significant maneuvers were to happen in the theater through what is called the operational art to be exercised by the higher command and the operational art as i mentioned last time also it had three elements it had the vertical troop strike it had the integrated fire strike and it had the deep raids in the form of operational maneuver groups and so boldness was required imagination was required so there was there were ideas because the higher command had to come up with ideas so this is where the pla picked up in the 80s the concept of focusing at the operational art but the operational art 
it was all about attrition nothing more than that so the next step for them to learn was the 1991 war the war that the us military fought with the iraqi forces and the two big things that won the day spectacularly for the us military were its battle networks and its limited pm pgms precision guided munition and the pla noted that the indian military totally oblivious learned no lessons from the 1991 gulf war for the simple reason now we had started doing the counter terror operation in jammu and kashmir so the entire focus shifted there and nobody bothered to even study the advances in warfare now so what the pla did was battle networks as i said is the name that the us military has given to the same thing what the russian military calls the reconnaissance strike complexes so the thinking here was that okay if this is the strength of the us military that means the strength lies of the us military in their sensors the sensor grid being connected with the shooter grid so that the kill chain is closed early so why not destroy these software networks this is what they thought of and this is where they started working on the cyber elements and this is where they fine tuned and they have today excellent electronic warfare capabilities so what they did was the whole idea was that okay if this is the strength the software networks let's destroy them because if we are able to destroy these networks that means we will render their communications ineffective to a bigger degree the us military will be rendered blind and deaf that is so much better than going for a war of attrition and this is precisely as i said through cyber and electronic warfare and their missiles the these land based missiles they started working on that and this is what is called the systems destruction warfare and today they have perfected their system destruction warfare which basically means how to destroy the battle networks of the us military and their command and control structures and their operational and strategic targets through their rocket force so this is where they started working and they have created a formidable system and therefore the entire military strategy shifted from attrition to cognitive confrontation defeating the enemy in the battle space for, sorry in the combat space first of all you are not looking any longer at the front line you are looking at a combat space you are looking at the theater how to get into the theater and then you are not looking at total attrition you are looking at destroying the communication networks system destruction warfare puts hell of a lot of cognitive uh, pressure on the military leadership if the chain of command gets broken disrupted or destroyed now at the same time they also thought that all right let's destroy this of the americans and let's strengthen our own battle networks Uh, our own battle networks software networks which i said what they call are the operational systems and they started working on that the operational systems so this whole time starting from 911 till about 2010 2000 uh, 2010 these decade was a wasted de- decade as far as the us military was concerned because they were busy fighting these wars in afghanistan and iraq but the pla remained focused on strengthening its software networks and today there is simply no doubt and it has been acknowledged and it is there in my book by the top leaders and i have quoted them top leaders in the pentagon that they have achieved they seem to be a step ahead in so far as the software networks are concerned because they have been able to insert artificial intelligence in those software networks which is what the americans called creating the autonomy at rest that means these networks are critical for the flow of information 
and therefore if you have artificial intelligence in them they help in quicker decision making details are there in my book they help in quicker decision making and hence closing the kill chain faster than the enemy this is absolutely worrying for the us military so they believe basically this contest that is going on between the us military and the pla is actually in two areas one is this that they seem to have taken uh, they have gone, gone further in this creating of autonomy at rest in their software networks and the second of course is the the competition which is going on in the entire artificial intelligence ecosystem this was just a side thing that i wanted to say because this is how the military mind has to remain active it needs to think it needs to be imaginative it needs to create ideas something that we don't do here now before i go further there are three things i have said please think about them there is something i said is the operational level of war then you have operational systems and then you have operational art these are three different things they have a meaning now let us now we are talking now of a major power military power i am only talking see somebody said that you know why not us military vietnam some two star put out on the social media this point i am only talking of state on state conventional wars nothing else so now what is pitted is a major power the pla which is 30 years three decades ahead of the us of the indian military where the army chief is still talking of the front line he is still still talking of the line of actual control and we are strong there let us see now the role of the rocket force here so the rocket force will do two things one is a independent missile war that will happen now in that independent missile war they have a whole huge inventory of ballistic missile cruise missiles but i want to just underline their hypersonic missiles which were inducted after testing and experimentation as reported in the pentagon report to the congress in 2020 they were inducted now hypersonic missiles have three major advantages as most would be aware their speeds are more than 5 mac they can go up to 20 max mac being the speed of the sound then they operate between 40 kilometers you see the altitude from ground of space is 100 kilometers from ground till 20 kilometers you have all the cruise missile the commercial aircraft the fighter aircraft they operate all below 20 kilometers altitude so from 20 to 100 is where the hypersonic missiles will operate the hypersonic cruise missiles which will be powered by the scramjet rockets they will operate between 20 kilometers to 40 kilometers and between 40 kilometers to 100 kilometers beyond which is space will be the hypersonic glide vehicles and there are plenty of reports which are suggesting that the hypersonic missiles will be the mainstay or the backbone of the rocket force or the first line of attack of the pla very significant not only for the us military for the indian military as well i'll just come to the implications in a while now the other thing what they have done is they created as they created uh, you know against the us military in the taiwan strait they created what the us military calls the anti excess area denial capabilities a to ad which the pla calls counter intervention strategy now they have their missiles there as well and a, a mini a to ad they have created in the last 2 years on the line of actual control against india so they have in addition to their integrated air and missile defense system where they have the russian uh, s300 s400 and a whole lot of their own indigenous systems they also will have the long and medium range ballistic missiles as part of the a2ad 
and especially the hypersonic glide vehicles and the hypersonic cruise missiles so they will be there plus what they have which means that obviously they have created the early warning and the long range radars they are all there then to create a whole wall and extend the wall further first of all if you see the distance between the mainland china and the pl the taiwan strait is just about 177 kilometers so they are trying to extend the envelope and a uh, a small version of that they have created here also against uh, india indian military in the himalayas so how what they are doing is that first of all how do you extend that you extend the envelope by your avax they have now got the state of the art avax have come and then you extend the envelope by airborne electronic warfare equipment helicopters uh, aircraft so they brought that also and they have brought the uh, the the firewall a to ad firewall down also till the ground which caters for where you have these uh, laser laser weapons today they have a capability of something like 150 to 200 kilowatts lasers this is the power of the lasers which can take on the drones they can take on the cruise missiles so then they are they have cyber there they have electronic warfare there so the point i am making is that they are basically created a firewall where it will be absolutely difficult for anything or a part to get inside their airspace it will not be possible there is another reason why it will not be possible because when i said the missile war and i said the rocket force what the rocket force will do is the rocket force will take on all the operational targets and a few strategic targets for example the air bases indian air bases their main bases their diversionary bases the fuel and ammunition dumps the bridges on the brahmaputra like the chief of army staff manoj pandey was saying that logistic is a lesson that we have learned from the ukraine war well it won't be applicable here for the simple reason you are pitted against a adversary which is way way ahead it's a major power then you are fighting your, your battle space your, your battle ground is at heights of 15000 to 18000 feet that means that your deployment areas are limited your logistic uh, routes are very limited and they'll all be targeted so what logistics are we talking of because they've been working here for the last two and a half years everything is known everything is targeted and they have decided how exactly that the targets have to be taken out so we are looking at the entire combat zone we are looking at logistic routes we are looking at transport routes we are looking at command and control centers considering that uh, the indian military is not networked then we are looking at power grids we are looking at television and radio stations uh, in the urban areas itanagar and all these places they are looking at tunnels you name it all these in the first 48 to 72 hours the whole idea will be systems destruction warfare or the cognitive confrontation warfare where you destroy demolish disrupt the chain of command by blowing off all the communication nodes by blowing off all the important areas and this is precisely what they'll do so what little air force will be left first of all we have to cater for the other front also and if little air force is left i said said it will be absolutely impossible for it to get into get past the uh, a280 uh, anti access area denial capability firewall that they have created uh, on the on the lac they created there in other words we are talking about air dominance i believe with these capabilities they will be able to create air dominance and that means that the in the first 72 hours if they cut off all the communications they are able to do that and they are able to do their operational art the maneuvers in the combat space they would have accomplished a lot in short indian military simply does not have a an answer to pla's rocket force and until we have a an answer to that we could be in very big trouble because all we have 
in terms of land based missile in the category of cruise missiles is brahmos and brahmos as we know is a joint venture with russia i don't want to say any further on that as far as the ballistic missiles are concerned the operational missiles are only the agni and the prithvi series and they are now part of the strategic forces command which is responsible for administering the nuclear weapons they are there in other words we keep talking from you know we keep reading the stories and the drdo tells us they are making parle they are making nirbhay and so many others are there prahar is there but none of them is operational and this is something which will get us in big trouble thank you